to, this topic is fantastic because it just says it all in its title. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Ridiculous Router by, uh, with Gene Eric. So please give Gene a warm welcome. <laughs> Thank you guys, can you hear me? Okay, cool. You be quiet. All right, so the whole point of this particular talk is to go over open word and some of the things that maybe you didn't know that it could do. Things have changed a lot over the past few years and uh, I've been playing with it quite a bit to see some of the really awesome crap you can do with the current hardware and current software that it's got. So, uh, who am I? I'm a hacker. Um, I'm also really cheap, so I like to play with things like open work where you don't spend a lot of money to get some really badass features. So, uh, my inspiration from this uh, is actually over the course of many years. So when I started out, all this open work stuff was kind of new. There were other competing projects with DD Word and things like that. And it was kind of a pain in the ass to get the software on your router. And there were only a few routers that you could actually use. But there was a great book that was put out back then by Paul Asdori and Larry Pesci and a few other ghost contributors. Um, it's still kind of useful for doing embedded device and IoT security analysis. So you might be interested in it, but it is definitely dated. So the other point of inspiration. So this is from TourCon 7 in 2005. This is Qui-Gon and Sysmen giving their talk about how they solved the problems that OpenWert was having at the time. And they put out this awesome distribution called Fair Usa for doing uh, security analysis and just generally having more tools to play with on that environment. It was a little rough to use because they only had like one version of the router that they supported, but that was the time. You had different uh, CPUs and socks and things that you were using for different router versions. So it was really hard to maintain back then. Not a lot of knowledge. Everything was still pretty black box. But these guys kicked butt and they helped me way back then. And, uh, you know, the, they contributed to this talk just from teaching me. All right. So why bring up an old topic like Open Word? Well, doesn't everybody know about it? Maybe not so much anymore because people don't really talk about it as much. Um, everybody's got a home router now. I, I can't think of anybody that doesn't. Even if you don't have broadband, you probably still have a router. So uh, I think it's a good topic to bring back, uh, especially for new people and people that may have forgotten. And the world's changed quite a bit since, uh, since the last time I heard anything about OpenWort. So thought maybe we should have a new chat about it. There's way, way cooler stuff going on. And uh, you might not know some of the things you can do with it, but the thing that I like to underline is there's enterprise features on here. People are buying similar gear that does the same thing and spending way, way, way more money for less support. So in my mind, maybe you should actually consider it for some enterprise uses because it does a lot of stuff. So hardware, this is my hardware. So this is what I actually use for this stuff. And uh, you can see that it's just a normal router. Uh, it's got detachable antennas. It's 802.11c, AC. Um, but the points for buying this particular one for me were it's got good specs. It's not out of production. Um, it's cheap. It's well-supported uh, Wi-Fi chips in the sock. Um, they're not the best Wi-Fi you can possibly get, but it's pretty darn good. Um, it's got USB 3 support. That was a really big thing for me. There's a lot of bandwidth that you can use, so that means you got a lot of opportunities to expand on it. And you can really easily add a serial port to this thing to have an actual serial console, which is important when you have an open word device. Things go wrong, you mess up one configuration, everything goes out the window. Um, or in my case, for one of the routers that I had, you plug in a USB device and suddenly the thing doesn't boot. Mm. It's good to have a console. So, the competition. Uh, so this is a sonic wall device that is also very similar to that uh, WRT that I just showed you, but it's a commercial device meant for enterprise, meant for entry level um, enterprise equipment. Um, 
This particular one's got almost the same specs. It's an, it's an 802.11 AC thing. It's got removable antennas. It's got a USB port. Um, it's a lot more expensive. Um, 575 was the check that I did yesterday for this hardware on Amazon. And uh, if you want updates for the thing, you gotta have a license. Otherwise, you don't get updates. And it's closed source, so there's nothing you can do about it. Um, it's nothing you can really add to it. It does have a CLI, it's not well documented, but you're kind of hosed if you want it to do more than what the company has decided you should do or in a different way. This is just a little side-by-side -side comparison of these two devices. Um, the WRT device, way faster CPU. They've got the same number of Ethernet ports. Um, USB 3 on the WRT one, USB 2 on the other one. Uh, console port on the Enterprise device, no console port out of the box on the WRT, but you can add it really easy. Um, there's more RAM on the Enterprise device, but it's already a lot for what you're asking for. 512 for a router is actually a stupidly large amount of RAM, unless you're doing some really odd stuff with it. Uh, and there's also a bit more storage, like double, on the WRT device. So a point of note, the Enterprise device has a USB port, but it's also almost useless. You can only use it for a few things that the company deems like ideal. Like uh, there's some diagnostic thing that you can use it for. You can plug in a few uh, cellular modems into the USB, but that's kind of it. You can't use it for external storage. So if you wanna offshoot all of your logs from this router into an external storage device so you don't kill your router, you can't do it. It's not an option, so I actually modified my device to have a, a serial port on it, uh, and you can kind of see it in this picture, uh, all those cords hanging out of the back. I did a pretty clean job installing it because it was so easy to do, um, but you can see I've got a little adapter for the DB9 to go to RJ45, um, so it's basically like an enterprise console on the thing. Uh, you can also see in this picture, I've hung off uh, an extra USB Ethernet adapter, and I have that on there actually for load balancing. It allows me to do some cool stuff there uh, with LACP and things like that. So you can actually get some really badass stuff from the fact that this has got a USB device on it and it's well-traveled at this point in open work. Um, so what can you do with this? Well, you can do all the traditional router tasks that you could do with the enterprise device. Uh, it runs routing protocols. All the ones that you could possibly want to do, it can do that. So your discovery of routes, not a big deal. You can actually set that up. Um, it's got DHCP. It's got DNS, uh, DNS caching and its own supplier of DNS on the device with DNS mask. Uh, that's included by default and set up as part of the DHCP structure. Uh, you can run multiple networks on the thing. You're not locked into just one subnet. You can tell it all about what kind of network you want to have. And it supports VLANs right out of the box. And uh, most of the onboard switching equipment that is actually part of the hardware includes support for doing uh, VLAN tagging or not. So you can have untagged VLANs, uh, untagged ports in different VLANs, or you can have tagged ports in multiple VLANs. You can have multiple VLANs on a single port. All of that stuff is supported. So <clears throat> the more advanced stuff that you can got. Um, so you can do load balancing with the thing. Like I said, LACP is supported. I actually use it with Cisco gear. I have a LACP balance uh, of two cords into my Cisco switch, and they're just very happy together. Um, you can do VLAN trunking with 802.1Q. Again, I do that with my Cisco switch. It's a good thing to have when you're talking about an enterprise network, then you can have multiple routes, you can have isolation, and you can just do a whole lot more stuff if you can get encapsulation to the switch. Um, 802.1x, it can be a client on the wired stuff, and it's got a bunch of other things it can do with 802.1x and wireless. I haven't found a way yet to do it in wired, so I don't know how you would really make that do that um, by itself. Um, as an 802.1x provider. 
It can run free radius, but you'd probably want to have the 802.1x management actually on your external like Cisco switch or whatever's downstream from there. Because I don't think the switch that's on board is going to be able to do that. Um, active failover. There are ways that you can actually set it up so that you can have multiple WRT devices that are actively communicating with each other with a virtual IP so that if one of them dies or reboots or I don't know, you change the configuration that causes a reboot, that's okay. There's another one that's still waiting to go, which is an enterprise feature you kind of have to have in the real world. So. <clears throat> There's lots and lots and lots of wireless stuff that you can do with this thing. Um, it's got basically any capability that you can imagine from uh, host APD. And one of the things that that includes is uh, 80 megahertz uh, bandwidth for a single channel uh, in 802.11ac, which is really cool when you're talking about streaming big stuff, right? So you don't have to have as much overhead of all the wireless crap to get your data there. It's kind of similar to jumbo frames in like a layer one, layer two world. Um, 802.1x on the Wi-Fi, like I mentioned. So you can do uh, WPA2 Enterprise with PKI from this little thing. So you can have basically a, a big boy access point controller that's doing some crazy auth for you. Um, you can have multiple Wi-Fi networks, so you can have more than one SSID, you can have different SSIDs for the 2.4 and 2.5 on this device. Um, you can have different ones for each VLAN. Your options are endless. So again, that's a, a bigger feature for people that are actually trying to use this in an enterprise context. That's something they might need. Um, I do this myself. I have a guest network and I have a secure network. Guest network is WPA2 with password and the secure network is PKI. They are on separate VLANs and they can't route to each other. So that's a, a, a thing that I think everybody should look into, but the, I, I'm a bit crazy when it comes to security. Um, you can set dynamic VLANs with uh, the radius in 802.1x. So if you see a particular certificate presented to you, you know that user needs to be on VLAN blah. So you can have multiple VLANs on the enterprise, uh, on the enterprise WPA2 off. Um, one of the things that I found recently that I thought was just awesome is the ability to do CAPWAP with this thing. So if you've never heard of that, um, it's basically the idea of you've got lightweight access points all over your network that you can roam from one to the other uh, smoothly because they all have the same configuration and they're sharing some data back to the main controller. Um, CAPWAP is the open version of LWAP that uh, Consortium actually put together. Um, but it took forever for me to actually find an implementation that works. Um, the AC tube one actually has its own like web interface that you can also load on this device. So you can turn the radio that's on the router into a client to the CAPWAP server and then add more access points from there. So you've got a single point where you're managing all your SSIDs, all your credentials, and you can also do monitoring of your clients and things like that from a central point with CAPWAP. Um, mesh networks are supported. Um, you can do uh, bridging over wireless with the WDS4 adder, which basically means you can have a bunch of devices behind another Wi-Fi bridge and it doesn't care. It'll authenticate and everybody will be happy. Your clients won't know they're on Wi-Fi. It's a good feature to have. So other stuff that you can do with this, uh, you can run a VPN on it. I do. Um, you can run it as an IPsec or uh, OpenVPN. I do IPsec with IKEV2 for EAP TLS, which is, means that you have to have a certain, so does the server. Works great. Um, you can run attack tools from the thing. So there are a bunch of projects that do uh, building of drones from WRT devices. Um, there's an old example actually in the ultimate hacking guide of doing a Kismet drone from a WRT device. Uh, there are a bunch of commercial hacking appliances. Uh, this is a good example of one, but there are others. Um, rogue AP detection, IDS, uh, and UPnP, I know it sounds like a stupid thing to do on these routers, but if you're actually using it in your home, gaming, it's, 
it's a thing you're going to want. So, um, so you can actually use this thing to do all kinds of things on your network. You can run a phone system from it. You can use it as your Active Directory system, kind of, sort of, almost. Um, you can do captive portals, whether they're for your own authentication or for a paid service, like with Sputnik or, or what have you. Um, you can set it up to do centralized logging on your network, which is a really cool thing to have. It starts eating up the processor power a little bit, but you can do it. Um, and you can use it as your single point of identity management if you really wanted to. Again, you're starting to add on features that are going to tax this little device, but you can do it. Um, other things you might want to know about it. Installation is stupid easy with this particular device. You literally just download the firmware and apply it through the normal UI. And most of the time, that's how it works now. You don't have to fight to get this thing on your device to even play with it. Um, it's actively developed. Uh, they have a lot of stuff around CI CD. They have nightly builds. So when things change, you can just get the nightly copy of your router firmware if you want to. Uh, it comes with a GUI. Um, doesn't sound great for, you know, more advanced people, but if you're just trying to get started, it's a fantastic thing to have to know. You just load this firmware on. It's still got the features that your old router had before you blew away the firmware. It's got a pretty GUI that you can probably understand. And you can SSH into the thing and throw commands at it that way. So um, where do we want to leave off with? Well, things have changed quite a bit since the days of Qui-Gon and Sysmin uh, with Farouza. It's not like that anymore. They worked really hard to get their stuff working, and now you don't have to work that hard. So I'm encouraging everybody to actually just go do this. Um, package management. It has package management, and it's really stupid easy to use. So use it. Um, install a console port. You're going to want it. You might want to learn something about JTAG in case you're doing something more advanced and blow up your device. Bus Pirate, still your friend. Um, they have a fantastic SDK for this thing, and I've actually made Docker images. There are existing Docker images for the thing, but I felt uh, needed a little more. So I have some of my own. I'm going to be posting those up. They're not up yet. Um, but I've been using it at home because I had to build some kernel modules to make that external USB thing actually work, but I was able to do that. It was really easy. Um, you can find older enterprise level switches pretty easy. Um, they're cheap if you look around. I got mine for 10 bucks. You can't beat that with a stick. I don't think I could buy anything at the store, even like home user grade for 10 bucks. So um, the list of hardware is just up there. So everything in its mother is supported. You might have to learn a little bit about what hardware is actually inside that piece of plastic, but it's probably supported. Um, so yeah, get rid of the OEM firmware. It's going to fail you at some point in its life. And open word is actively developed. So if you can use it, I highly recommend that you do. Um, there's constantly new routers coming out that have a lot more power than the one that I'm using, but I like stability, which is one of the other reasons that I chose the one that I have. Um, it's well known how to interact with that thing, and it, uh, it's, it's known not to really crash very often, and I've been living happily with the thing. It doesn't ever reboot itself. Um, USB, as I said, I use it for an external adapter. It's something that you're going to want to have. So here's a few places you can go to find more information. Uh, go look up your own hardware if you've got a router at home, which you probably do, and see if it's supported. It probably is. Um, you can find information on the embedded device here, and you can find Docker images for uh, building open word projects at that site. All right, that's it. <laughs>